And then when I sat down to make this video, I thought, what does ink only cards actually even mean? So early in the fall, my friend Jerry approached me and she asked me if I wanted to do a collab with her. Now, I was so busy at the time that I was like, yeah, yeah, sure, no problem. If you have an idea, just throw it out there and I'll see what I can do. Now, I didn't give this a whole lot of thought. When Jerry had said ink only cards, I was like, oh yeah, that's no problem. That'll be easy to do, minimal supplies, easy. And then when I sat down to make this video, I thought, what does ink only cards actually even mean? In my head, I had pictures of beautifully blended backgrounds, some blues and purples and winter colors all ready to go. And then I thought, ink only? Am I even allowed to use blending brushes? No big deal. I thought, oh, I'll just grab a stencil and then I'll, oh, wait a minute. Stencils aren't ink only cards, are they? That being said, today's video is a super supply friendly video. Cardstock, inks, you're good to go. I have been keeping it really simple all month, actually. In my VIP group, my latest exclusive video was also just ink, cardstock, and one stamp set, and I managed to create five incredible cards just using those supplies, which really goes to show you that sometimes less is more, and you can create beautiful things when you just have a few supplies. So obviously, I'm allowed cardstock, right? I need something to put this ink onto. If not, this video is gonna get a whole lot of weird. And I always seem to have small strips of cardstock on hand. Because I create my cards four by five and a quarter inches, the panels, I always seem to have a strip ready to go on the end of each of those cardstock pieces. And I like to collect these for sentiments and things. And I thought, oh, perfect, I'll get them out now and I will dye them with my ink colors. Now I started applying my ink to my paper. Just a quick note, felt ink pads are gonna take a little bit longer to build up the color than foam ink pads do. So if you're using felt, just know you might have to go over it a couple of times in order to get a good result. Now I used a mat underneath to keep my surface clean, but not only that, because the ink isn't seeping into the mat, I can just spritz some water over top and mop it up using a watercolor piece of cardstock. And I'm gonna create myself four amazing backgrounds with no effort. Plus there's no waste for your ink, which is always a plus. Later on though, I remembered there is a slightly less messy way to do this and that you keep your ink pad face up on your surface and run the paper strip through your ink. You could even use something like a post-it note or something to keep your fingers from getting into your ink pad. But hey, I'm super happy that it led to me getting four extra backgrounds for the price of, well, none. <laughs> Now those paper strips helped me remember that I could go direct to paper. And there's so many cool techniques when it comes to direct to paper. So whether you call it direct to paper or you call it swinking like my friend Laurel and Ardith, a mixture of ink and swiping, you can go ahead and create yourself beautiful backgrounds too that blend nicely into each other and just by adding a swipe of each ink pad. Yes, you have a little bit of a harsh line between the colors, but I don't mind that look. And you could also spritz it with a little bit of water if you feel like you wanna get those colors to mingle and mix a little bit. You just wanna make sure that those are colors that work well on the color wheel together. Another thing you can do is add some color on the top of your watercolor paper. Spritz it with some water and you'll have a waterfall of color running down your page. This looks super cool, I find. I always cut my cardstock a little bit taller than I normally would so I can cut off the top and that way it looks a little bit more natural. Now taking a little bit about what we learned in the beginning by mopping up all of that ink using a watercolor piece of cardstock. Another thing that you can do if you don't have watercolor cardstock or you want more control over your amount of color that goes down onto your paper, you can grab a stamp packaging or you can grab any type of plastic packaging, add your inks directly to the plastic and spritz it with some water. When you go ahead and flip it over and add it to your card, you really have a lot of control as to where you're placing it. You do want to, however, touch it lightly on there to make sure that the colors really go together rather than staying as little droplets on the plastic. Now, Jerry's gonna be showing you some more ink only techniques in her video, but she's going to also be showing you how to use some of your household items that you have lying around to get a little bit more use out of those ink pads. Now, obviously, when it comes to the ends of these cards, you are gonna have to add a sentiment, whether it's handwritten with a pen or you use die cuts or a stamp or whatever it is. However you choose to decorate them is your opinion. But these backgrounds are ink only and I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching, bye.